Hi there. Somebody sent in a Nintendo Switch OLED with a really bad installation that uh, an installation that went bad. They tried installing a chip and here's the result. I want to make a video because this is going to be a challenge for me and I'm sure somebody can actually learn something from this. That's the purpose of the video. And uh, so let's get right to it. First, we're going to go ahead and kind of diagnose the the faults that we can see. And so if we start at the D point there, this is this is very common because it's a tiny, tiny point to solder onto. People usually apply too much heat and uh, this ends up happening. So if you can see there, we have bunch of solder on the side we have that D point that's going underneath the CPU and then the circle there with a bunch of exposed uh, this is actually ground here on the side and then a very very little tiny I think it's called the via that goes through the board and underneath maybe even to the other side I don't know but we want to we're gonna have to solder a small trays there or a small little wire connected here connected here and then lastly to the chip. We are going to try to install the chip next. We have the A point, a completely smothered with, with uh, solder. So I can see the resistor underneath, but it's completely out of place. We're going to have to remove that. I saw some solder here. I think that should be fine. There should be no problem there because I think these are all in uh, parallel. So we should be good there. And then if we turn it around, uh, let me see. The ground point, it's just, it was just kind of laying there, not, not even soldered on there. The first thing I see is that the individual here was using very thick wire, extremely, extremely th thick for this, for this uh, service, this application. Something was, was gonna go wrong either way. So if we turn it over, we can see that the uh, that zero point here, it doesn't look that bad. But we are going to have to resolder that. And then on the B point, luckily these resistors are still in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove those wires. Because we're going to be using thinner wire, probably like a, like a 32, 36 gauge. And uh, that'll make a, it'll make it a lot easier for us. Let's check the. I don't know what happened there, but let's check the, uh, the CPU soldering. See, I just pulled that, and it's completely out. So that wasn't soldered. I'm going to leave it at that for now, but I will come back and I will give it a look a little later afterwards. All right, let's go back to those points that are, are going to have to be, they're going to be, we're going to have to fix them. We'll start with that A point. Let's remove this first. And let's fix that dot zero since we're at it already. So, what do I think about this install? Honestly, it's pretty bad. Can we save it? I think so. But we won't know, maybe something is shorted, I, I have no idea. The most difficult point we're going to have to fix is that D point, the, the D point here, that's, that's not that easy. Let's try to remove this one here and put a brand new resistor, just in case that one's bad, so that's removed. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and what I'm going to do is 
So we're just going to be using wires. We're not going to be using the flex cables to install the chip anymore. We're going to we're going to scratch it. This is this, this is just a trace. We are going to scratch this area here to kind of put it sideways. It'll give us a little more slack on the uh, the resistor. Okay. A little bit of flux. I'm going to grab a brand new resistor. If you guys need the values of these resistors, they're probably not the same as the original ones on the Nintendo Switch. This is a 2.2K ohm. So 2.2K. And it's just a regular same size resistor. And this works. I've used it many times. So let's drop one here. So now let's get our tweezers. We're going to kind of prepare the area here that we scraped and just kind of, this will make it easier for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. And this is very tiny, so... I'm going to... That appears to be in place. Let me look at the other side. I know this side soldered. And by angling it like that, it make, gives me a little more slack. And it's soldered in place, it's fine. So that's that. Let's clean up this. And there's the other resistor on the side, you guys see it? Anyways, that is the That'll take care of that issue. Now let's go for the D point, which is not going to be easy. The problem is that if if, the, if we were to get the the connection from this this trace, that wouldn't be an issue. But we have to connect it here as well. At least that's what I've been doing. Connected here, then here, and then to the chip. So that is the. Uh, it's not really easy, so. I am going to kind of place the chip here in, 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 a, in a place so that we can kind of um, see what length of wires we're going to be using then I'll come in and, and, and put the the shielding on top and everything but we'll do that then we'll turn it on and everything and then lastly we will uh, clean everything up and uh, and just fix it in place I'm going to put it right here for now Is a Raspberry Pi uh, uh, RP2040. So that's about right. I put a little bit of uh, st uh, sticky glue on, the, on there, but I can easily remove it. There's a bunch of flux on here that I'm going to have to clean up, but for the time being, let's go ahead and uh, fix what we came here to fix. That's probably. The best I'm going to be able to zoom. After I do this, I will turn on this, uh, plug it in, and see what I what I get on the on the amp meter, and then we'll know if it's actually booting up. So let's grab some of the thin wire. This is going to be it. And this this wire is actually. Coated with a small or thin uh, 
plastic. So but we're going to have to remove that first. All right, guys, this is what I'm attempting to do. We're going to remove that coating first. I have to turn the fume extractor on. And then we're gonna kind of pretend the, the area there. So as you can see, that's in place, but now the challenge is to kind of come in here at an angle or maybe even do this first I gotta clean the whole area up now so as you can see it's not easy It's very tiny, hard to work in there because of the of the space and the mess on the side. Everything wants to go everywhere. I mean, it's doable. Let's clean up that area entirely with with some uh, desolder braid. Okay, so we are going to apply a little bit of flux. It's a little better. Hopefully you guys can see that there. All right, let's try one more time. And you know what? Maybe we can start with the with the point there, with the, with the very end, and then maybe we can kind of uh, angle it, and then move, move move to the other side. Let me see if I can find the wire here. Again, this is extremely tiny. I, I have trouble even finding the, the wire. All right, we're gonna, gonna start there. And we're gonna cut a little piece off of the actual wire. And then, And pretend the tip. Okay. So look, it's in place, but I don't like the way it feels. It's too, too wonky. That's better. Okay, that's good, that's good. Let me see if I can straighten it up. Uh, 
That's even better. Oh. So that's good. That looks very good. It's not touching, I don't think it's touching the metal part. And now we're just gonna cut it. Zoom out. As long as it's not grounded, we're fine. We're gonna zoom out and we're gonna just make a cut over here. Just, we're not gonna solder anything yet. Okay. Now let me plug it in guys and, and see if I see any activity here. And I'm gonna plug in the battery real quick. We're gonna plug in the battery here. And then we're gonna give it some juice and uh, uh, just depending on the amps that is drawing, I will know if it boots or if it's giving me some issues, okay? So let's find out. I just wanna kinda see if this, we're gonna have any other issues and not waste too much time. So everything should be in place. If nothing is shorted, I should get some activity. We're getting 37, that's very good. 37.37 .37 amps. And then zero, and now it's booting. So now we're getting 0.56 without the screen. Uh, we are, we get about 0 0.56, 0 0.60 amps. And that means the chip is booting. I mean, the, the switch is booting with the screen. You're gonna get uh, like 99 to 1.25, something like that. Anyways, it looks like it's working. So that's very good. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that battery. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the chip real quick. I'm gonna do this real quick and, and later on I'll clean it up and, and put a, this is kind of just there. Uh, later on I'll put, put a, you know, the shield and everything for the, for the uh, CPU. Okay, so let's, that's good. I think we got it. Let's go ahead and unroute this little wire here. And then underneath, and we're going to give it a little bit of slack just in case we need to move things around. Again, I'm just going to see if everything works. We can always all right, that is in place. Now let's go ahead and do the rest of the points. Hey, we got our voltage. That one's done. And let's do um, some regular wire now, some 38 gauge wire. So let me just uh, finish this up so that we can end the video and not, not make it so long. We're gonna use a. Uh, we're gonna use, let's do the A point here. I like this wire, guys, because I can actually use my hand to maneuver it, and that's the A. I just want to double check that it's going to work and then we can clean it up thoroughly. That is A. Let's go for uh, the voltage. For the voltage I'm going to use a slightly thicker wire. to route it through here. It's okay if these are bridged because the uh, capacitors are in parallel. So 
so we can remove this. That is the three. And then for the C point, we're going to use this thin wire so that it doesn't stress the that zero adapter over there. Very good. And this one we can route through here or through here. I like to, to route it through here because it doesn't get caught in the middle over there. So giving this one a little bit of slack. So let me know in the comments there if you uh, what you guys think. What would you guys have done different? Good, moving, moving that wire to the side. And we want to cut that because we don't want to disturb that area. Looks good, nothing is touch, touching, nothing is grounding. Finally, we're going to use the ground. And I like to use that red wire for the ground since it's thicker. Let's flip it over. And again, giving it some slack. Nicely on there. Very good. Let's finish up by retouching those uh, CPU points. They look good. Just to make sure, let's clean it up a little bit. I'll clean that up. It doesn't affect anything, but still we want to clean up a little bit the area so that we can uh, I'm going to share you, with you guys a secret that I've noticed uh, with, you know, throughout my experience with this micro soldering. A lot of people like to use, I don't even know what it's called, but it's some type of, I guess that masking or green that you can get from China or the UV, UV hardening thing. That thing actually shorts things out, so I don't use it at all. As long as the things are soldered, soldered properly, and you have some flux on there to kind of protect it from, from rust and stuff, that's not going to come off. Even if the switch falls, that's not going anywhere. You don't need to, I mean, I guess you can use a little bit of hot glue in the future. That helps. But that green stuff, red stuff that people put on there, and then they, they cure it with a UV light, Honestly, I don't, I don't recommend it, but again, that's just me. Let's just, uh, let's test it. Let's see what the activity on the, uh, on this, on the, on the RP2040. Flux is not going to hurt it in any way, so let's just see. Let me see if I can lower down my my colors here. All right, let's see what it looks like. Hopefully, you guys can see the light, and hopefully, we get a nice green light. 
So the chip is on. But it's not doing anything. Uh, maybe the chip is not programmed. I've seen these chips that are not. Sometimes you, you got to program them first. Let's try it again. Let's plug the battery in and then check, okay? Sometimes we need to plug the battery in. So the battery is connected. Let's plug in the charger. So yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's working. Let's check the, uh, let's check with the multimeter, see what we're getting. Setting the multimeter in ohms. Let's check our points here. We have ground and ground. D, we're getting 760, which is good. A, we are getting 650, which is good. C, we are getting 670, which is good. And uh, 3 volts, of course, we are getting good voltage there, or whatever that is. So that looks good. Maybe this uh, adapter, maybe it's not even flashed. Oh, you know what? I'm missing the, D, the B point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be it. All right. Got carried away and uh, lost a little bit there because I actually want to make it work. Let's see. So this is the reset point. Carefully turning it over. There's a bunch of flux, flux everywhere. Flux doesn't, doesn't affect anything. There's flux all over, all over the board. Some people like to clean it thoroughly. I mean, you can, but the flux is not bad for the board itself. All right, let's see if it works, okay? So now that we checked every point, uh, it should boot up into, we should get a green light or something. Let me turn off my LEDs. All right, let's plug it in. Let's plug it in again. Sometimes we got to disconnect it and plug it in again. There's the blue light. There's the white light. That's a good sign. It should start flashing. And finally, we should get a green light. So we did it. This is uh, not an easy fix, guys. Be careful if you're going to try this yourselves. There you go. And uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys like the video. Like and subscribe. It helps us much. And uh, we get encouraged to continue to make these types of videos. We are working on, uh, on making other videos with some of the systems that are, you know, educational. If you guys like the video, if you guys uh, uh, have any questions, feel free to visit our website, wayayeo.org. Uh, if you subscribe to the website, to the, uh, to the newsletter, we are giving away a free installation of uh, RP2040 every month. We have been doing it for about three months, so make sure you don't miss, it, you don't miss out on that. Thanks again, and uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. See you guys on the next time. Bye now.